In an attempt to promote vaccination and stay-at-home orders, the federal government recently released a shocking new ad campaign depicting a young woman gasping for air whilst attached to a ventilator. However, the vast majority of those under 40 are ineligible for a vaccine due to an apparent lack of supply. Young Australians like myself are now seeing our fully vaccinated friends overseas getting back to normal while we are still living in and out of lockdowns. Why did the Morrison government spend taxpayer dollars to produce an advertisement featuring the wrong demographic and not one promoting the benefits of vaccination instead? Well, we've got two young women on the panel here, I guess, who are... Yeah, you'll yeah. take that age discount yeah. too. Yeah. Who I guess this, uh, this ad was aimed at. Alison, did it work for you? It is, like, if there was... It was possible for Morrison to gaslight anymore. <laughs> was, like, that is, like, the upper limit of it. Right? It's, like... It's, um... I mean, even talking of, like, the fatigue of lockdowns, I can't entertain <sighs> that when, like, everyone's made huge sacrifices. But until I have something in my arm and an opportunity to access that vaccine, um, I won't... I can't entertain that lockdowns are going to, you know, these have to end. Because we can... We do it and we save lives doing it. Um, I... First seeing that ad, uh, distressed, and I thought, why is the federal government... <laughs> there we go. Why is the federal government... Uh, why is it trying to instill deep fear in people? It has not given us a public health campaign since the pandemic hit 18 months in. Uh, I grew up in a time of slip, slop, slap and, you know, big public health campaigns that you can do them when you actually want to achieve, you know, public health outcomes. What this ad for me is doing is achieving, distilling fear. It's, it's deepening fear and I think this is very typical of the way the federal government's politics are shaped. It's not concerned about... Uh, bringing people together, of which all of the research shows that um, messages of solidarity and take, make this sacrifice because it's for the good of everyone. If you look at everyone else's ads internationally, smiling faces, people coming together, the sacrifices we made, we're all better off together, and we've got that. And it features a young woman, a young person, who can't even access the bloody vaccine. I mean, it's... It's a bad ad, but, I, I mean, I think it's unfair to say that uh, Scott Morrison is trying to deliberately somehow gaslight people. I mean, he uh, hasn't had a great record in his career of producing great ads. We all remember Lara Bingle, and that didn't work that well either. But <laughs> the federal government w would genuinely be trying to come up with some way to get more people to get vaccinated. Oh, you just that don't get us millennials, ad. Steve. You don't get us. <laughs> OK, Michelle, no, actually, honestly, explain the millennial point yeah, of view on this, then. <laughs> no, but honestly, I, I, will, I will confess to my age, because I am struggling to care about this issue, Steve, I have to admit, because I just think this whole story about how old the lady in the ad is is such a kind of... Um, Typical, and I, I'm, go, I'm going outside... Say it, you've had I'm your going outside, no, <laughs> you've but, had your but, but I'm going outside of Australia again, and I'm saying, look, it's just a very... Um, privileged kind of argument to be having. I think, you know, fly two hours north of Darwin and, and land in Indonesia, and do you think anyone cares about how old the lady in the ad is? Like, we're so lucky in this country, and if that is honestly the most important thing that we can talk about, I know it's not the most important thing, I, I, and I, I'm sorry, and I know you, it's, it's gaslighting and all of that, but, um, but I think... Gosh, we are really lucky in Australia. Can I... I'll try another but, but, angle for but you. But can I just finish what I... I just yeah. want to... On, my, my reaction to that is that, you know, in Indonesia they're running out of oxygen and the money that was spent on that ad would have bought a lot of oxygen for Indonesia. So you're saying the advertising campaigns, it doesn't matter what I they come up with. I, I couldn't care less. Can I try another angle? Lady in yeah, the no, go on. I want, what... hear from, I want to hear from Steve again. I think it was cut off, so... Um, which rarely happens. But, I, Alison, I mean, I mean, I take, I'm like, being he's very blank. polite. He's <laughs> blank. Being very polite, yeah. I think it's, like, deeply offensive to say that people concerned about um, a virus that's killing millions of people... And no, they don't have... an ad. Yeah, but the fact they got the, the point of the context of the ad is that we don't have any vaccines. That's the context of the ad, and that matters. And so, I will take away the word gaslighting because it's something that you didn't. No, like. uh, no. It's, but how I about I use the word lowering expectations? Because if if we look at that and we say this is okay, everything that's going on right now in this deep crisis-ridden country of this deep political crisis and this health crisis, and this is okay. For me, that's not okay. And I think that's part of being in a democracy, part of lifting expectations, and about looking out across Australia and saying like. We can do better than this. It doesn't make us privileged. You know, we can sit back and be like, it's great that we're not... Like, we are saving people's lives right now. But the reason why we're doing that is because Australians believe in the public healthcare system and they believe that we can make sacrifices to save each other's we're lives. We're lucky to have a public healthcare I, system. I want, to, I want to come to Mary Louise McCaws.
No, Louise, I'll come to you. But can I just quickly say, for the record, I think it's important because, you know, everyone's having a red-hot go at the advertising campaign here. We did work very hard to try and get a member of the federal government on the panel this evening, including, we asked, Greg Hunt, Barnaby Joyce, Jane Hume, Bridget McKenzie, David Gillespie, a number available to us. I understand we will have one next week, which is terrific. But just so that position is represented, they're not excluded, they just weren't able to come. Mary Louise? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it's my understanding that this ad was made last year and only released now. And I think that it's the wrong time to be released. It uh, reminds me of the first pandemic I ever worked in, with, it, which was HIV, and with the bowling ball ad yep. that made people think that HIV was, you know, would hit you randomly. And then there was a brilliant ad by... Um, Glenn Mabbott and Edward Richards, and it said, if it's not on, it's not on. And the reason that was such a great ad is it, it engendered um, a, an empowerment uh, of people that got it, that you didn't have to worry about your um, sexuality. All you had to remember was, if you're going to have sex and that's casual, if it's not on, it's not on. And it was really fantastic. And we need an ad for particularly the young ones that I'm so concerned about, the 20 to 39-year-olds, that gives them power about, you yeah. know, the fact we love them and we care for them. Uh, the well, problem with the, the ad uh, just going back was that we didn't have enough vaccine, so they didn't want to have this fantastic ad to get everyone to rush out and get an injection because we didn't have anything to put in their arms.